Okay. What is the involvement of the Illuminati? They've got a CRR, and then they write it out, Council of Foreign Relations, the CFR, and the Trilateral Commission, and the Rockefellers. You, whoever wrote this wasn't here last night, right? Right. Okay. I was going to say. <laughs> That's what we talked about last night. The CFR is the name of the Illuminati in the United States. David Rockefeller is the second most powerful man in the Illuminati. He runs the Council of Foreign Relations. And the Trilateral Commission is the United States version of the European Common Market. And most people don't realize that America is a member of the European Common Market through the Trilateral Council. And that the Trilateral Commission, or not Council Commission, is the brain center of the CFR. And our <coughs> born again Christian president is a member of it. You just have to let me read some of these in a minute. Oh, yeah. The John Birch Society has exposed the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Illuminati, and many parts of the world conspiracy. Why do you have it listed as a hate group? Gary Allen, author of the books you mentioned, is associated with the John Birch Society. And that's not much saying much for the Birch Society since Gary Allen has said across the country that the problem with America is the fundamental church. I'm going to say this again. Took some time on this last night. I think that a group that gives half troops truth is worse than a group that is totally ignorant. It is a hate group because it is anti-Semitic. Its platform and the American Nazi platform and the Klan platform are almost identical. And I have them listed together as part of the Illuminati, not by guesswork, but because I used to have to hand checks to the leaders of the Birch Society. The Birch Society is just like the Masons and many other groups. The point is that people vote in them and that work with them and so on know nothing of their leaders above it. That's why we say over and over, have nothing to do with a group that you don't know 100% about. And when a group tells me they're good and they have secrecy, I say, why if you're good? You only need secrecy if you're bad. That's why I have men that know everything that I do 24 hours a day, and they know everything about my ministry since I've been saved. But when accusations come up, these people will go and do the defending for me. I will say this. They say parts, but then they add. They mention these, but they make the head of the Illuminati the Rockefellers, and the Rockefellers are not the head of the Illuminati. Second, they make it a Zionist conspiracy. It is not a I'm not a Jew. Nothing wrong with being a Jew, but I'm not. And not one member on the Grand Druid Council is a Jew, and not one member on the Council of 33 is a Jew, and only about eight people on the Council of 500, the Bilderbergers, are Jews. They say, well, the Rothschilds are Jews. So what? They may have been Jews a long time ago, but they are not Jews now. They believe Lucifer is God, and Jews do not believe Lucifer is God. They are the synagogue of Satan. There is a difference. And it's not a Zionist conspiracy. What do I think is wrong with Star Wars? About everything. One is that everybody that signs a contract on Star Wars is an initiated witch and had to prove what brotherhood they belonged to before they could star. Like, oh, really? Yes. Now this is fact from talking with the people who produced the show. Second, the guy who played Luke Starwalker on the show, some of you from having the television bug, may realize that he starred in the premiere of Eight is Enough. They had him to a contract, and he wanted out of it, because, he did, because it became a series. And he said, I want out of it, and they said no. And they said, well, we're going to do a follow-up of Star Wars called Star Trails, which is so. And I want out of it, and you better let me out of it if you know what's good for you. And, and they said no, and they said, well, I'll just finish your show. I'll cast a spell and, and kill one of the leading stars, which he did. They let him out of the contract, because he turned to the producer and says, you're next. The real reason for Star Wars is that five of the major doctrines of witchcraft are taught all the way through the movie, and that the statistics coming in now are 
over one million people have joined witchcraft because of the movie since it's now. Now I talked with the man who handled all the publicity for the movie. He verified everything I'm saying. He also said that I said, well, I guess about 75 percent, and I still believe that, 75 percent of the movie was witchcraft. He said, no, only about 45. I said, well, what about Star Trek? He said, oh, that's 95 percent. I said, well, what about making everybody uh, in witchcraft in it? He said, oh, they are. Everybody in it has to be. I said, well, who's going to be the new star? And he said, oh, the guy, and you probably won't know his name, so I'll tell you who he plays, all you women that like soap operas. He played Snapper on Young and Restless. Now, that's not unusual, since the three major soap operas, you must be a witch before you star in them. Young and Restless was the last to go. That's why there was a big change over in Young and Restless staff recently. The other two are All My Children and Secret Storm. So, if you parents think that your kids are the ones that get it all because of the rock music, <laughs> Is Larry Flynn a witch? No, he's a charismatic. He says he talks in tongues regularly to Peter and Paul, and they come and visit him in person and have dinner with him. <laughs> oh, well, Ruth Carter Stapleton told him that that's the way it was supposed to be. My, my, is a six-pointed star. We, <laughs> is it engagement ring? My engagement ring is a six-pointed star. Would that, would, would that have spirits attached, or is it just silly? Not silly. Could you go and have your fiancé exchange it for another one? Huh? Well, I'll put it to you this way. There was an extremely high woman in the Eastern Star in Atlanta, Georgia, last Sunday night. And she brought her Eastern Star up and asked me what the five-pointed star with two points up was, and I told her, gave her all the facts on it. The ring was had about eight diamonds in them. Two of them were over a carrot. She took it home and threw it in the fireplace. I mean, you do what you want. My wife pulled the diamonds up first. <laughs> no, actually, she said pull the diamonds up first and, and, you know, give them to the Lord or something like that. But she did. She got rid of the ring. Where does faith? Where does faith in the promises of God apply in the end? Well, if I let me tell you something. I talk a lot about the end times, and I'm sorry that people get afraid when I talk about the end times. But then, if Jesus was Lord in everybody's life, there wouldn't be any fear. I'm not afraid of the end times. You know, the Christians that went to the thing went rejoicing. You see, back then, you only had a sword. And when they sent a legion, which was a hundred soldiers after you, one sword wasn't going to stop a hundred with a sword. But today, one rifle could stop a hundred with a rifle. This is something you have to decide. I mean, if you dig martyrism, you know, go on ahead. But the thing about faith in the promises of God is that I have faith that God is going to let me know when it's going to happen and is going to let me be prepared for it. Now, you can imagine how many Christians, there were 20 million Christians died in communist countries when the communists took over in brutal ways. And they were warned. And they listened to other ministers, just like the people in Jerusalem listened when Jeremiah tried to warn Jerusalem that it was going to fall. Just like people listened to other people when Noah tried to warn people that it was going to rain. We're going to have a lot of people that's going to be like the people in Noah. They're going to be looking up like this, and then when the rain starts hitting on them on the head, they'll get the message. When the bullets start coming through the door, when you can't go to the grocery store, and your electricity is turned off, and it's 50 degrees outside, and you're freezing to death, you'll say, I wonder if I can make it to the retreat. Well, you won't be able to then. All I can tell you is that I believe firmly in the promises of God, and therefore I believe that I am going to see the end times. I believe that I am going to come through it. But if I came to your door, and I said your house was on fire, and you said, ah, uh, my house is fireproof. I went back up and laid down. You burned up. It's not my fault. I'm trying to tell you the house is on fire. It's up to you whether you get out of it or not. Okay? I firmly believe in the promises of God, and that's why I believe I'm going to make it. And I believe that God has given much of us ministers a little insight on the end times. You know, I could be a very big minister in this country, have a lot of people back me that I don't want to back me. All I have to do is close my mouth about three things. The charismatic movement, 
the Masons, and what's going to happen to Christians in the last day. I can't do it. I can't let the two groups go untouched and let the people in them not hear the truth. I can, in all honesty, go up to my retreat, close the doors, and sit there eating food. And now, see, retreats aren't to stay and hide it. They're to go put your family in and go back out and minister and have a safe place to go to. I don't plan on hiding in those days. I may have to carry a Bible and a gun at the... Come think of it, I did that anyway. But... Uh, I, I plan on fully to keep on ministry. That's why most of the retreats have printing presses in them. But I can tell you this, that I will survive through the thing and I will not sit up there in a retreat feeling guilty over anybody else out there because I'm going to make sure that every place I'm at, they know about it or I won't go there. Do you feel J.R. Tolkien, the author of The Hobbit and other series, has wrote any of his books on the basis of witchcraft? Many of the themes in the books are those used to... This person couldn't have been here last night. Every book written by J.R.R. Tolkien, including the Silmaron, just finished by Christopher, and you'll find Christopher's name on those handouts, was not written by him. Until Tolkien wrote these, these things used in witchcraft, as you put it, were secrets to witchcraft. And Tolkien was a member, along with another gentleman I'm going to mention in a minute, both were supposed confessed born-again Christians, but both were members of the Golden Dawn. That's the Rothschild's private church in London. It's the oldest colon in the world. And he gained order, he gained permission both from the council and the Rothschild personally to take things from the Book of Shadows, the Witchcraft Bible, and print them in books. You may think that the Hobbit and the books of the Triology, like the Lord of Rings and Two Tars and so on, and the Silver Milan are fairy tales. But they're the gospel to witches. According to witches, those things really did take place. If you've got them in your home, you wouldn't own a Satanist Bible, at least I hope you wouldn't. Pray for you if you would. And you wouldn't own a witchcraft Bible, why would you own part of the witchcraft Bible? Now you can go, don't do this, but you could go to the occult stores and you could pick up many books that came out after The Hobbit came out that bear the alphabet of witchcraft, the runes. But the Hobbit released them first, and they were secret upon the penalty of death till then, and nobody could have written them that had not been in witchcraft. Now, there's a Christian author whose books are sold in every Christian bookstore, that's why I don't like Christian bookstores, who claims that Tolkien went into the Lord. He forgot to say what Lord. And his books are required reading before you can join a coven, required studying. His name is C.S. Lewis. You pray about it but they should go in the far places right along. And I'm going to quote from one of Lewis's books. The pathway to God is like a hall with many doors. They all lead to God. Not on your life. Jesus says that anybody comes other than through him is a thief and a robber. Should a Christian in any capacity physically prepare for him? Should a Christian in any capacity physically prepare for the impending takeover? When I prayed for questions like this, I didn't know I was going to get so many. Well, I already told you, yes. If you don't, you're the one who's going to have to look at your wife or your husband or your kids and say, I'm sorry, I can't stop them from coming in the house. What should fundamental Christians do in the light of things we've learned? Pray a lot. Read a lot of the Word of God. Win as many souls as you can before you're going to go to jail for it. And prepare for the end times. Who is the son of Satan and who is he by name? Well, you've got son of Satan. They don't call him Son of Satan, they call him Son of Lucifer, they call him Adam. And he's a person that has a sister that's a witch, has a beer drinking brother, and says he's born again but only has the fruit of the devil. I think that'll survive. See, I'm not like a bunch of Christians that I had to put up with for four years telling me that Henry Kissinger was going to be the Antichrist. I say the things I say because I saw his name in a letter written by Philip Rothschild says everything the Illuminati is going to do over the next eight years is to make the man of peace and gave his name and then let's name as Anna, Adam, the son of Lucifer, to bring peace to this world. So they're backing totally. You know, the peanut farmer. <laughs> I'm going to kind of change this question around a little. It says, does John 
Kennedy's assassination play into it. John Kennedy was killed because he became a Christian. We talked about it last night. If you want to know about it, contact this pastor. He'll give you a tape of it. Mr. Todd, what do you look for in the eyes of witches? Well, you'd have to know what the eye... I can line five people up in witchcraft or the occult, line five people up that aren't in it, and you'd understand what I mean. But I'll give you some people's eyes to look at. Ruth Carter Stapleton, Jimmy Carter, um, Cindy Williams, Carol King, Kate Jackson, Karen Fawcett Majors, Faye Dunaway, everybody on the three soap operas I named. After a while, you'll get, the, you'll get the idea. Is there a government within the government of the United States? What is it called? Yes, Illuminati. Is there one earthly leader of the Illuminati? If so, who is he? Philip Rothschild. Are the Christians to take the card of the 666, the Bible says, in the hand of the forehead? As I said last night, you're not going to believe that an angel is going to come down and tap you in the hand in the forehead and it says that God's people are going to be killed that way. No, I firmly believe that, as many people know about Bible prophecy, the uh, forehead is the mind and the hand is your works. And man, you're going to take it there if you're not with the Lord when it comes. Besides, the card is the way they're, they're planning on passing it out. Of course, they were planning on passing out world currency several years ago. They're always changing plans. If you don't like what I said, stand on the street corner and probably change in a year. Are you putting a time limit on the time of the Antichrist when will he come? I'm just saying, like I said last night, the Illuminati believe that they're going to gain the world by the end of the year that starts the age of Aquarius. That's 1980. They believe it by an eight-year plan that I've seen. I have not seen anything go wrong with that plan yet. Now, should something go wrong? Should this country start serving God? I'm sure, because the Illuminati believes that the only way they're going to gain control of the world is through America. Not through Russia, for all you communist towns, but through America. Now, if America gets saved, naturally they're going to lose it. Then that would take a mass revival upon the Christians' hearts first, and I do not believe that God's kids are ever going to grow up long enough to have one of those. What part, it says here, what does the inducing ceremony, I guess that means uh, initiation ceremony, for the witches involved, the same thing that, it, that you do to become a mason, you do to become a witch. What part do demons play in the writing and performing of rock music? Everything. 100%. There isn't a record album you buy that has not been cast on by a coven when the tape was first done. That's mandatory. That's required. And a demon is ordered to go with every rock album, rock album that comes off of that master tape. So you can go home and count how many demons you got alone. You mentioned last night that when Congress begins arguing that we should begin digging for information about laws being passed. My question is how and where do we look? Who do we question? So forth. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I get my information from places you can't, but all I can tell you is you could try. There are some independent groups in uh, Washington that try to expose things, but since they're not Christians, I don't have anything to do with them. I don't know. I guess you could listen to Joe Boyd and Jack Howells and Tom Berry and John Todd and other people a lot. You know what's happening. I really don't know. We're going to start this summer producing a newsletter. If you want on it, uh, you can... Uh, Right, it's, I guess that's about the best thing. Uh, our address is back there, and the man running the book stand has an envelope. Don't take the envelope. Just copy the address off of it. It's not the envelope we passed out. They only have one left. Uh, and we'll send you the thing free of charge. We're going to try and keep up on all the laws and the things that are happening. We're also going to be saying a lot more about surviving in the end times. Without the law, the devil has no power. What is the law? The law. The old law. The Old Testament law. He bases all of his upon the law. Not not so much the commandments and stuff like this, but... Uh, well, let's put it this way. Everything outside of grace is law. It's like everything outside of being a Jew is a Gentile. I got a question. What is it? That's the question. I don't know. What is it? That's the question. 
I don't know. What is? What is? What is? Since witchcraft is so prevalent, why have so few of us heard anything about it? So few of us heard anything about it. Well, if you haven't heard anything about it, you must have been living in a vacuum. You must never watch television. Praise the Lord if you don't. You must never read the newspaper. You must never listen to the radio. And you must never listen to probably the most preachers. You must never walk into a Christian book stand, bookstore. I didn't know that anybody didn't know that witchcraft was the fastest growing thing in the United States today. Okay, I'm going to try and rush through these real quick because we're running out of time. What about... Will the Christians be taken out in the rapture before the card is issued? I have no idea. I can't answer that. I'm not that good a Bible scholar, I guess, on it. I can read it both ways. Okay? Personally, I think that since it is going to be tried out in the United States before it's tried on the world, I think you'll probably see it. I believe that personally. Whether you want to believe it, fine. When you can't go to the grocery store anymore because you don't have it, don't say I didn't tell you. But I think that before it is ordered for the world to take it, we'll be gone. When it's first passed out, it won't be, if you don't take it, I'm going to cut off your head. It'll be, if you don't take it, you're not going to eat. You're not going to buy. You're not going to sell. Later, if you don't take it, you're a danger to society and you must be put away. Where is this Christian retreat? Will it be open for Christians? Yes, it will be open for Christians. In fact, Christians can come and live there any time they want to build a house. If you don't want to build a house there and you want to come there later, you'll have to get with one of these escape routes and work it out from them because we're not going to open the doors for a bunch of people to come out there and camp when we're trying to get people out of the occult right now. You'll just have to wait till uh, times are so bad that you'll believe. See, the interesting thing about a retreat is that you're going to get up there and you're going to say, oh, this isn't so bad. We're up here. Then you're going to want to go back like lots of life. Well, that's because things are good because where you're at. Now, if you want to go back to the city and get yourself killed, that's all right. But we're, we're going to wait till it's so bad that nobody's going to still say that I'm crazy. They're going to say, why didn't we listen soon? Did you mean last night? When but I went in there, 2 in the morning. Got up to the door and it said closed, 12, you know, midnight. I said, well, you know, Christians are funny people, maybe. And I pulled on the door. It opened. I went inside. There's one guy in there, toolbox out on the thing, bent over trying to fix this coke fountain. See, the coke fountain had broke just about the time they were going to close, and he decided to stay behind and fix it. That's the way the Lord has to treat some Christians. He has to break things in their lives to keep them in one place long enough to do his will. But he stayed there, and I walked in. I, he looked up and says, oh, can I help you? And I said, yeah. He looked at me and says, yeah, I think you need some help. He had to see me. I was with some brothers the other day, and one of the girls that I used to live with in witchcraft walked right by the car and looked right in the car and didn't even recognize me. Uh, that's what I mean. When the Lord changes you, I believe he changes you. And I walked in, I sat down, he started witnessing to me and got nowhere with his witnessing. And finally, I got to the point that I was in witchcraft, you know, I told him about it. After he caught his breath about 20 times, he picked up the phone and called the pastor. It was only 3 in the morning. And you know that would be very weird. Nobody ever calls the pastor for prayer at 3 in the morning. <laughs> so he called the pastor and he explained. He says, oh, that, yeah, that's Lance Collins. We've been praying for him a while. You know, and they started acting, I think, the way that they must have acted when they prayed Peter out of jail. He arrived at the door. They couldn't believe that it was taking place. So they, he said, well, I'll call up a bunch of people and I'll pray, we'll start praying for him. You go back and you witness. They witnessed some more. It wasn't getting anywhere. He was doing a standard witness and it just wasn't reaching me. I just wasn't receiving what he was saying. And finally, he stopped and he said, Lord, give me discernment in this matter. Give me knowledge. Give me a scripture of your word that will do something that will break the devil's hold on this man. I heard the prayer. Oh, boy, this guy's weird. Here he goes talking about the devil again. And he got 2 Timothy 1.7. And he opened it and he read it to me. And I gave my heart to the Lord. It was too good of a promise to pack up. I spent... All my life, in fact, I guess from the time I was five years old, in a world of absolute total fear, and, when, and also all the guilt. In fact, my mother, at that very moment, was in a mental hospital. She is so barred out on barbiturates now, even though she's out of the mental hospital, that she doesn't even know who she is most of the time. And it's because of the fear and the guilt of the things that she's done. And when he said the Lord would make my mind new, 
and take away the fear. I said, that's it. Show me now how to get it. And we knelt down and we prayed. And I accepted the Lord and I said, Jesus, I want your forgiveness, but can you take the guilt and the fear away? And I got up out of there and talked about no fear. I went out there and almost got myself killed because I didn't have any fear. I still don't have the fear today. And if anybody should have a fear, it's somebody that came out of the Illuminati. I don't have the fear today. And that's why we're having our rehabilitation center now. We're trying to take the fear out of people's lives and teach them that Jesus can make them anew. We have a center that we're opening tomorrow. It's very funny. The doors of the center aren't even opened yet, and it's already filled. There's cars coming from the East Coast. In fact, the most second most powerful witch that has ever been saved was just saved last April after I left the East Coast. Her testimony is almost similar to almost everything I've given today about the Rothschilds and the politics and Charles Manson and other things that she knows about. And she's coming out here to go through rehabilitation. I'm going to put her through just as fast as we can and get her out and get some tapes made on her and let the world know there's another nut out there saying the same thing. But we've got, like one girl moved in last night as we were moving the furniture into the place, we moved one for rehabilitation in. And it'll just... This fill up. In fact, we'll probably have to start believing now for another six months for another building. But these buildings are necessary because when a person is saved out of the occult, out of the Illuminati, a contract is placed upon their head where professionals, not amateurs, are looking for them. But someone has some very good professional people. And they'll send them after to kill you. So we try to guard these people and protect them for a period of time so they're able to stand on their own two feet. He said, well, what about me? Why well, had some loving Christians around that had sense enough to hide me out so I was able to come out of it and was able to stand on my own two feet and know how to protect myself and stay alive and so on. My wife, when she was saved, the same thing was done for her. And now we're believing that hundreds will get saved because the fear will be taken out of their lives. So we ask you to pray about it with us. And right now, this car is going to be leaving in a little while from come across several thousand miles from Maryland to California. About three, four people that have been saved out of the occult will be in the car along with bodyguards. They may seem to think that's kind of funny, except there'll be 100,000 people trying to collect the bounties on those kids between here and there. It's not funny at all. It'll be a miracle if they get here, but I serve a God of miracles. And I ask you to pray that that car gets here with all of its occupants in absolute safety, protected by the blood of Jesus. Okay, we're going to go for some questions and answers here real quick. I'm sure I probably stirred a few up in your minds. If you'll just lift your hand, a man will walk back with a microphone, take the question. Back here, the lady in red. Or brown? Yeah, brown. All the way in the back. Lift your hand up high so you can see. My question was, I mean, not a question. I know I know what uh, when he was mentioned, uh, uh, revivals and things that saved him. I know they do because my daughter is married to a minister and I was saved and I know that Jesus can take out devils and demons and, and revivals and things and people can be saved because I was. Okay, let's stay, let's stay with questions so we can sit and think right here, young man, real quick. Stand up so he can see you because he can't see your hands walking around so much. Could you explain the Rothschilds? The Rothschilds? The Rothschilds are a family. Many of you, I'm sure, have seen the three little globes that hang around the pawn shop as the emblem of a pawn shop. That comes from three acorns off the Rothschild family crest. They were money lenders to begin with in Austria, and they became, which they are now, the largest, the richest family in the world. They are not considered humans by the occult world. They're considered gods. They believe that gods, sons and daughters of Lucifer, dwell in these human bodies. And when the humans die, the Rothschilds die, they go into the next Rothschild born. And they're not to be treated as men, they're to be treated as gods. And believe me, they are treated as gods. Their word is absolute law. That's the Rothschilds. They created, they founded the Illuminati, and they, not, many people can't understand why a family of Rothschilds 200 years ago, it's actually, been, it's actually three because they existed 100 years before their birth date, would create a conspiracy for a takeover that they never hoped to see fulfilled. Well, that's because witches believe in reincarnation. And they believed that they would be alive during that time to see it happen. This may seem funny to your ideas, but when you're raised in it, it's absolute truth to witchcraft people. Right here. Okay. I'm going to use this, yes, just a minute. 
Um, Friday at, at in chapel at school, you said people that were involved in Hollywood and music and things like that were somehow involved in witchcraft. Do you mean that they were actual practicing witches to be popular today, or did they just have to go along with it? And also, does that include things like all forms of entertainment, such as um, different parts of the country, country music and Broadway and New York and things like that? Well, <laughs> there's a scattering of it through country music. I guess probably the leader of it in country music is a man named Tom T. Hall. But... Um, in rock music, you must be an initiated witch, a COVID member. That means you're a minister, okay? To be, and anybody in the last two years that's come on television must be an initiated witch. Three of the major soap operas on TV have now made it a fact that to be a member of their staff, their television, you know, actors and actresses on these three major soap operas, you must bear the scar of initiation to be on. Okay? That's why the leading one, the Young and Restless, is so popular. Okay? Now, that's, if you, any of the new shows coming on, you can just check them off. Those people belong to a witchcraft or Satanist brotherhood somewhere or they wouldn't be there. Okay? And eventually they'll get all the older ones out that got in there, do different things you had to do back. You've always had to do something. You're not on television or in the movies because you're good. You're there because you paid a price whatever the producer wanted from you. Now, it's witchcraft. In the early 70s and late 60s, it was homosexuality. And before that, it was the producer's couch and so on. Okay? But now it's witchcraft. All right? Uh, yeah, two things. Uh, first off, you were talking about the Rothschilds. There's a book that I just read I'd like to recommend to anyone who's interested in the international banking. It's called None Dare Call It Conspiracy. And that really explains it in the context of what's happening in the world today. And secondly, I would like to know about the witchcraft. What about these uh, cults, the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, the Mormons, uh, stuff like that? Can you tell, tell us what influence that? Well, the closest to witchcraft is the Mormons because their Bible so resembles passages from the Book of Shadows. But, which is the witchcraft Bible. But, see, here's the thing about the cult and so on. We, we have a mailing list, I mean a post office box that people write in, communicate with. There are so many thousands of cults, and most of them go to the skies of Christian churches today that are teaching this var variation from the Word of God and this variation and so on. And the thing here is that I firmly believe is there's one way to the Lord Jesus Christ, or to the Father, through the Lord Jesus Christ in Calvary. That's the only way. Through repentance, through a born-again experience. But with the devil, there's always but one. And all these cults are to serve one purpose, to keep your eyes off of Calvary, the only way to make it. And that's why all the television and all the literature out today is so down on the Christians for only one reason, that they try to say they're the only way. They're not saying they're the only way. The Lord Jesus Christ is saying He's the only way. And they try and put you down because you believe that repentance and the blood of Jesus is the only way there. Okay? But it is. And that's why certain well-known ministers today are trying to become popular and say, well, it's possible to make it to heaven other ways. Well, the Bible said there'd be idiots like that in the last days. Yes. The age of Aquarius, you said, was like 1980, right? Mm-hmm. And you said that um, the man called Adam would be the Antichrist in whatever, uh, the covenant or whatever. So they believe he'll be the okay. real dictator. It's getting yeah. pretty close to 1980. Yes, it is. Uh, do you have any idea or, you know, who it might be? Cause his name was most... mentioned, but I'm not going to give his name. Okay. Too many of you wouldn't believe me, and I've already lost half of you anyway. I want to keep the rest of it to the service. Okay. Yeah. Listen, I'll just say this. I had to put up with all of the uh, Christians running around for about five years telling me how Dr. Kissinger was going to be the Antichrist. I had to turn away and go, hm, 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 because I knew better, okay? But remember, what, who I'm saying it is doesn't mean that that's who it is. That just means that the Illuminati is going to do everything they can to make him the world ruler, okay? But the way this country's going, and since Christians won't turn and seek the face of God and repent, and God can't save the country because they won't fulfill Second Chronicles, I would say he's probably going to be right on schedule. 
Yes, I had a question about your sister. You said that uh, she was more advanced in witchcraft than yourself. No. At, or at one no. time? No, no. She she was given a position faster than I was. Faster That's than you Because were. women are given positions faster than men. Women, except in the higher councils, are the leaders. The high priest is in the coven, but he's only the enforcer. The high priestess is the pastor. I see. Is she okay. still is she still in the cult? That was the first question. Yes, the other she one, is. She is. Okay. She's, she's one of Philip Rothschild's girlfriends, and she runs messages between Philip Rothschild and David Rockefeller on a regular basis. Okay. And the next question is, uh, you met your wife when she was a member of the cult? Mm -hmm. And that must have been an awkward situation. Did you leave first? Or did you leave she together? She wife after she got saved. She took my sister's place as witch queen in the state of Ohio and owned the second largest occult store in the country. And she got saved in one of the meetings. And after going through real rotation and so on, we got married. Okay? And before you take any questions, let me do something here real quick. Because we're running out of time here. I spoke with your teenagers here at chapel, and I told them about a plan of the occult to place certain objects in Christians' homes to be able to put demonic influences into the home and tear down the home and the Christian prayer life and place rebellion and depression and suicide upon Christians. Now you may think, well, I'm a Christian. That's impossible. Listen to me. When you take something that belongs to the devil into your possession, you're asking for trouble. All right? The, Holy, the, the Bible, the Word of God was Holy inspired by the Holy Ghost. All right? Nobody, I think, will argue with me that's a born-again Christian, at least. Certain objects are inspired by the spirit of Satan, by demonic influence. Rock music. If witches can't cast spells on witches, they got, I mean, on, on Christians, they got smart. They'll let the Christians cast the spells on themselves. The witches will quote the spells in rock music, and then let the Christians play them, and they keep casting the spells over and over on themselves. That's why rock music. Now, you may think that's garbage, but the witches believe it, and I believe it, because I've seen it done. That's why rebellion and drugs and the sexual revolution have sweeped your children, and you try to shelter them from it by sending them to a Christian school, and then you let the world be brought into your homes in the form of rock music. But they didn't just want the kids. They wanted the adults. They pretty well got them with the soap operas. But they decided that they would put their most powerful object in witchcraft into the hands of Christians. First, they changed the name to make them look innocent. They didn't call them hexagrams and pentagrams and pentacles and leprechaun's horns and, and stuff like this anymore. They didn't call it the Ong or anything like that. They changed their name to things like just the stars and, and crescents and crosses of lives so they could sell them in Christian bookstores and so on. In fact, that was probably a surprise to them that they would start selling them in Christian bookstores. They decided to sell them through their conglomerates first, and they used federal department stores, which owns most of the department stores that you ladies and gentlemen shop at. And the one that's not owned by federal department stores is Montgomery Wards, and it's owned by Standard Oil. So it's owned anyway. And then they wanted to go into all the rest of the homes that maybe wouldn't pick them up in the jewelry stores. So they used one of their largest companies. And if we have any distributors of this company I'm going to name, don't you come to me, because I've got a stack of testimony of how distributors... When they first started selling this, depression set in their home, their marriages broke up, and three or four people actually tried to take their own lives and fit the depression that they didn't understand. And these were born-again Christians. And then when they heard about this, they destroyed the stuff, and they've never had any of this in their home since. All the depression left, all the marriage troubles left, and the thoughts of suicide left. So I've got the testimony, so don't come and tell me about it. Those are the first three. Now this jewelry I'm going to show you, except the second two pieces, could not be bought in a store until a few years ago. You stop and think about it when you started seeing this stuff. To buy these symbols here, you had to go to a, a, an occult store. Of course, that was easy for San Francisco. They've always been a little weird. But you'd go to the occult stores, but you had to prove that you were an initiated witch of a coven before they would sell this stuff to you, and it was made by their coven silversmith. The first one's called a pentacle. If you put a circle around it, it's called the pentagram. It's a symbol of witchcraft. At one point up, it's the symbol of witchcraft. Two points up, like it's showing kind of there, it's the symbol of Satanist church, the symbol of the horn god. You might also notice it's also the symbol of the eastern star. We were in San Francisco last night, and in the building that the Illuminati houses there, the Rothschild's private enforcer, Isaac Bonowitz, he's like a living computer, he's also one of the members of the council that I left. 
in the store down below, which sells many pieces of occult jewelry, they sell ladies' compacts with eastern stars embedded in them, with all the little runes and so on. This is called the hexagram, not the Star of David. The Star of David is a name change on it. David was dead and buried when that star was created by a son that had backslid and went into demonic worship. Solomon would seal his documents of war and his occult documents with that thing. They call it the Crest of Solomon or the Hexagram. And that's where the word to hex or to cast an evil spell came from. Witches, when they conjure demons, they call the demons up to talk to them in person, this star must be drawn on the floor for the demon to arrive in or it won't appear. Now that gives you an idea. It's the most evil sign in the occult world. This symbol in various forms means that you're an initiated witch of witchcraft. And if you watch television, well, I'm sure you do, if you watch television, you'll notice that many of the television stars are now wearing this symbol openly. Why not? Christians don't know what it means. You also notice it was a sign of the Shriners, too. This one up above is being sold. Oh, well, this one. Oh, well, somehow, there we go, maybe now. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. There we go. There. We got it worked out. The first one's called the Ankh. They call it the Cross of Life now. It's done in Christian bookstores and so on. The Cross of Life or the Ankh comes from Egypt. It means that you're a worshiper of Ra, the sun god. That's the Egyptian name for Lucifer. So it means that you worship Lucifer. It means that you despise virginity, that you're against virginity, that you practice orgies, and if you believe in reincarnation, that means that you don't believe in heaven or hell, that when you die you're going to come back again, and the word of God is a lie because it says you'll live once and then judgment. But they say no. The next is the broken cross, the peace sign. It didn't originate in Frisco or London during the peace movement. It's been around a long time. We've heard a lot of cracks about it, you know, the footprint of an American chicken and all this type of thing. This is what it is. When a member... Wants to be, when a person wants to become a member of witchcraft and they come from a Christian background, I didn't have to take this initiation because I was born into witchcraft. They're given a cross made out of ceramic clay, you know, baked clay, and it's turned upside down and they take the crossbars and they break it, forcing the crossbars down and break the crossbars off. And they throw the pieces to the floor and shatter it. And the priest or priestess, whoever's doing the initiation, then announces, you are free from the bondage of the Christian church. And because of this act, you shall have peace evermore. Thus, the peace sign. It's called the broken cross. This one you're not going to find until about a year from now. Anybody ever seen this symbol before? Everybody wants six, six, six. You're right. Six, six, six. It's three overlapping sixes. Okay, here's where you can find it. You can find it on the world currency printed out of Brussels. We bought ten billion dollars of it, but our president decided that it's better to go with a credit card than the currency now, so we're not going to use it. You'll find it in clothing and shoes made in the common market countries, in the labels of the clothing. More recent, about a year ago, it was on national television, when the president of the United States, you know, the peanut eater from Georgia, well, I mean, you know, I'm, that's about the best I can do for him. I could say more said he had personally designed a national security card that would be the answer to the problems in the United States, and that every citizen, law-abiding citizen, would have one of these cards to prove they were a law-abiding citizen. You know, whatever. And then, he got done making a speech, he left, his press secretary came up and says to the newsman, here's a picture. Now, for some reason, with all the flashballs popping and stuff, that card, this picture, never got printed in the paper. I don't know why. Maybe they decided it was a bad move. But in the center of the card was a pearl white glossy card, computer plastic type. In the center, in kind of a gray with words written over it, you know, but in the background, you know, like a watermark, was this emblem. Welcome to the last generation. They're putting their forces together. Now, the California National Guard has switched to this patch recently. It, there's a circle with three arrows coming out of it on their behalf. We've known that Florida, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and about six other states have switched to it this year. We've been told by the end of the year that all the National Guard in the United States will wear one patch. They've all, at the first of this year, were hooked into a computer in Dallas called the National Security Computer. 
That's who they call up, by the way, when they check out your Visa cards or your Bank of America cards or whatever the case may be. Now, if you've been going to the grocery stores and the department stores, you've been noticing the new computer cash registers. The, you know, one shopping step type cash registers and you put your card in it and ring up the purchase and it does all the business for you right then and there. Well, all the stores are supposed to switch over to them and the little poor stores are supposed to get the little phone unit that hooks into your phone and you zip the card through. This is all supposed to happen in the next year, right on time schedule, just like it should be. Then things will be a little different around here because by then they plan on destroying the money that you have. And then you'll have to use the card because the money will be worthless. Now, if you think, if you've been noticing all the television commercials, security is the word that everybody's been using on television commercials. Prepare for the future. Pack up for security this and security that. And then they're going to turn around and they're going to wipe your security off the face of the man. I'm going to destroy that microphone before it's over. Now, if I'm stepping on your little safe world, I'm sorry. I'm trying to tell you something in advance. And I'm going to give you a reading list so you don't think I'm the only nut in the world. The first book is None Dare Call Conspiracy. I'm going to give these quick and then I'll take a few questions. We've got a few minutes and that's it. The next is The Rockefeller Files. And the last one is Jimmy Carter, Jimmy Carter. Now, those can be found in most bookstores. They're by Gary Allen. But I recommend one that you find in the Christian bookstore. It's called The Day the Dollar Dies. You might decide to invest the financial money that you're saving in your savings account that will be worthless before this year is out in the work of God. I'm serious. It will be worthless before this year is out. This time next year, the time schedule they have, I'll give you a few events. I'm not prophesying. I'm giving you physical knowledge. You may think I'm crazy. They thought I was crazy back in 1972 when I said we were going to have a fuel shortage. They thought I was crazy back in 1973 when I said watch for the coal mines to close. So you may think I'm crazy, but next year when it's all happening, at least I told you in advance. You got a little bit of warning. There'll be 10 million people out of work this time next year. Now that's when our welfare system, unemployment system, and social security system goes collapse because it won't be able to handle that many people out of work. And you may want to go home and pray and ask yourself what this country's going to be like with 10 million people not eating and not having any money. And then you may want to pray that a lot of souls get one and Jesus comes quickly. I know I'm going to. Okay, I'll take some questions and answers. Let's just go without the microphone so we can do it quickly, and I'll, I'll try to repeat the question. <laughs> I believe you. Go ahead. Silver and gold coins, and, and uh, I forget the South African coin, and so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah, huh? Kudaran. Okay. Real quickly, I heard everybody in the world described as the Antichrist. That's why I'm not giving my opinion along with it. <laughs> okay? Yes, I've heard about him. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about him. And as for your silver and gold coins, okay, how are you going to spend them if you're not allowed to spend them? You understand what I'm trying to say? Okay. All the silver and gold in the world, you're right. You do have the right idea. The only system that will exist then is either the government no cash system or a barter system between people, okay? That's why people like Tom Berry, myself, Joe Boyd, and other ministers across the country are now telling people to prepare for a barter system, okay? You can make it till the Lord comes on the barter system. But gold and silver is the wrong way to go, okay? I take your gold and silver if you've got it stored up and invest it in the barter system real quick. Because even if you could spend gold and silver, okay, the barter system would still work even better. Because they've got to have goods. The number one most valuable item will be one that is illegal and almost impossible to obtain at the time, called a firearm, a gun. The next will be ammunition to go in that gun, and then dehydrated and freeze-dried food, or canned goods. Okay? Well, water will probably be the most expensive item in existence. Okay? They've got a few surprises for the drinking system that you now have. Okay? Next question. Back here. All the way in the back. You, yeah. Yes, he is. Is the Antichrist in politics was the question? Yes, he is. Yes, he's in American politics. Yes. Well, we've won quite a few Jehovah Witnesses. I'm not saying that this will win them, but you could try one question. It usually starts the ball rolling. What tribe are you a member of? You'd have to understand their doctrine, but it really starts with stuttering and stammering. Yeah.
Mm-hmm. Well, I'm against the Catholic Church for one reason, okay? It's because when I was in, well, it's two reasons. When I was in the Catholic Church, the occult world received a sanction from Pope Paul that white witchcraft was permissible for Catholics to practice. And second, I can watch Catholic Mass. I can go in and write our Masses down, our rites and witchcraft, and let you read them as they go through them in the Catholic Church. Most, most, of, most of the doctrine, the doctrine of the saints, the doctrine of the mighty ones in witchcraft. The doctrine of the wine being turned to blood, that's in witchcraft. Okay? Uh, the doctrine almost of everything, the altar, the minus the night, is the only thing missing on the Catholic altar from the witchcraft altar. And in some countries, not America, it, the, not the night, but the scourge, which is also on the uh, witchcraft altar, is laid on the Catholic altar. And most of all the doctrines, the doctrines of the, the virgins, the, the nuns, the doctrines of the priesthood, and, and so these are all come from the temples of Diana in Rome and were invested into the Christian church at the Nicene Council. Okay? It was back when the witches got smart. They said, if we can't beat them, we'll join them. And they've been doing it ever since. Yes? Well, there's a book coming out, okay, called The Angel of Light, all right? And in it, it compares the Mormons, the Masonic, and the witchcraft doctrines. And they're almost all three. They're like triplets, okay? It'll be from Chick Publications in the form of the Crusader comic books. It'll be out in about two months when the artwork's done. Watch your Christian bookstore for it. I get a feeling it's going to win more Masons and more Mormons out of the occult world than anything has ever done before. Because it quotes from some of the most inner books of the Mormons and Masons. The problem with the Mormons and Masons is they live on that secrecy thing. You never know what the inner circles are doing. So this book brings the inner circles to the outer circle. And boy, it's going to open some eyes, too. I want to see the Masons stutter and stammer around when they read out of their own books that Jesus Christ is the God of evil and Lucifer is the God of good. And then I want them to tell me that the Masons are a Christian organization. Yes. I can't hear you. You mean the Salem witchcraft trial? Okay, there's another book coming out from Chick Publications as soon as the Angel of Light gets out. It'll be out in about a year if the world hangs around that long. And it's called Mancho, and it's on the Salem witchcraft trials. Now, I went back there because my family, the Collins family, is credited of building the Salem church, building the building. So I went back there and I kind of conned myself in, half prayer, half conning, into the Ethics Museum Library where the original manuscripts are. And I went through the original manuscripts. Except for one prostitute, every person executed in the Salem witch crowds was not a Puritan, but a born-again Christian. They were from a group across the river that had separated from the Puritan church, and the pastor there was preaching the born-again experience. And that this one thing that would upset a witch having a bunch of freaky Christians next door to him. So they hung him. Considering the pastor wasn't a pastor that, that had the Salem church, he was a slave trader. That's a matter of history. The Collins had built the church, and it was the first American witchcraft coven. So why were they going to hang real witches? Of course not. And it comes out really plain. And one of the main charges was that the Christians across the river were reading from the book of Revelation, and that was against the law. Okay? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know it was that sloppy. Uh, and another, uh, my boy went to your, went to your uh, meeting, I think it was Friday, and he spoke to you at Dave Barter, where he was back by the case. Where are you again? Those are good questions. One, I'm packing a weapon because I've had so many attempts on my life. Okay? I don't, I know some Christians can't understand a Christian having a weapon. The same Christians have never had their families and themselves shot at dozens of times. I've got a wife and children and myself, and I might as well go ahead and stay at the refuge house the way that those people are going to stay alive because the workers all pack weapons within the house. Now, before that was done, we had one other refuge house. Three people were machine gunned to death in the house. That's why I pack a weapon. Okay? Next, I don't, I obey the laws of California. The weapon's on me when I'm in the church. When I leave, it goes in the trunk of my car. Okay? But uh, we take so many different routes, <laughs> they're going to have a hard time finding me when I leave the church. Now, I want to go with this a little more, and I'll ask your other question. 
There are many ministers today that are packing guns, all contracts on their life, all well-known ministers. One of the most well-known ministers in the country today is Jack Howe. Jack probably won't win when he's here. He'll trust the churches to have security for him while he's here. We had to when he was down at our home church a couple weeks ago. In fact, several people that are guarding me today guarded Brother Howells as bodyguards when he was there. But he preaches behind a bulletproof podium, and two bodyguards escort him all over the place when he's in Hammond. There's been that many attempts on his life. Tom Berry, Joe Boyd, they go armed all the time, okay? Now, Chip Publications, after doing The Broken Cross, the book that I wrote, had to move into a building with bulletproof glass in the windows. And when you drive up to the building, you'll still see the bullet holes in the windows where they tried to go ahead and shoot them anyway through the windows. Now, that is the real world out there when you start dealing with the occult. Next, the human sacrifice thing. I did. I went gave all the information to the FBI. I told them what senators were involved. I mean, the man who handed me the knife to do the ritualistic killing was a United States senator that ran for president named McGovern. I gave the times, the dates. I said, where weapons are stored, now this will give you an idea. Right now, and we have one witness back here who saw several trucks with thousands of machine guns and thousands of grenades unloaded two weeks ago in a storage place five miles from our home church up the Panga Canyon. We notified the alcohol, tobacco, and farms, the county sheriff, and the local police. It's still there, with more weapons being moved in every day. When we told the FBI, I had four ministers with me. They said, well, for turning this information in, and they didn't give it to me in writing, you have community and all this, and they walked out, you know, we walked out, thought, oh, good, we're really going to do something to the Illuminati. We can just see McGovern walking in in handcuffs. Called back two weeks later, they denied they ever talked to us. Now, that's the real world, okay? Now, if it happened to the, several times, they've tried to get, get grand juries, we try to get grand juries going. And all the only person they ever wanted to indict was me. So we've now learned that if they ever try to do that again, when we go in, we just bring a lawyer along with us. I don't mind going down. You know, uh, as long as the Illuminati goes with it, but they won't. Because you're talking about presidents and senators and FBI agents and everything else. I turned down preaching in a church in this area because two FBI agents were present. Nothing against the pastor or the congregation because it has a fine reputation as a church. I wouldn't go there for that reason. Because two years ago, we tried to get a grand jury, a federal grand jury, to indict two FBI agents that were spotted by dozens of people openly trying to kill me, shooting at me, almost at point blank range. Guess what happened? Nothing. Okay? Next question. One more question. Way in the back. With the occult? Okay, I'll give you a bombshell you're not going to believe. Kennedy got saved three months before his death. That's why they killed him. Okay? I can take about ten minutes, but I don't want to, to explain and prove that, it ha that that's the truth, but it did happen. In fact, several people, if they were there last night, I went into detail about it, okay? But it did happen. He was saved down in Tampa, Florida, uh, through a man that helped arrange the Bay of Pigs that became a Christian a few months earlier, and then witnessed to him along with a couple of ministers, and he gave his heart to the Lord. And they tried to call him back. The Pope even ordered him into a private audience a month before his death, and ordered him to take Mass, and Kennedy walked out of the place refusing Mass. The lady might give that to her husband. Okay? But that's why. Okay, Pastor, it's all yours.